separately and quite regularly here on our program, and we've seen them together before as well, but this is definitely the first time that we're seeing them as Mr. and Mrs. Congratulations and best wishes. Attorney Allison Aquino and Attorney Jesus Silva, like all smiles as they just got back from their honeymoon. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Kababayan today. Hello, Janelle. Oh. Thank you, Janelle. It's great to be here. And of course, we all know Attorney uh, Silva. We all know him on the show as our family law expert. And of course, Attorney Allison Aquino, our immigration uh, law expert. But, you know, I... I, I get, I hear people advising against couples who work together. You guys, you know, live together, you're husband and wife now, and you're, you're working together. What's the deal? <laughs> I love it. I advise actually working with your, your spouse and significant other because it does help you to develop a relationship with them stronger, I think. I, I find very few d disadvantages to it overall. Wow. Although yeah. I hear this, a lot of the same criticism. Right? Yeah. It's because you, you're, you have stress levels around the same you know, levels and it's just, they say that it's just more complicated. Well, you have to have the right balance, mm -hmm. uh, I think. And we're fortunate, you know, having the same professions, being in the same career and just having the right personalities that you know fit together. Um, Hasis and I, we've been working in the same office suite together anyways for over 10 years. Right. You know, and like you said, we go to work together, we go home together, we literally spend 24-7 together. And for us, it works out really well. For many others, it would not. And you know, <laughs> you know what? For your clients, I suppose it works out for them as well. Because you go to one suite and it's, you have family law advice and you have immigration law advice. But how closely linked are family law issues and immigration issues? I think people would be surprised to um, really delve into their own um, situations and realize that a lot of the there is quite a bit of mix between family law and immigration law um, and with us it's kind of nice because you kind of have the two minds uh, you know going into many cases together. Yes yeah, so let's talk about some issues now. Um, Jesus premarital family law agreements what what's that what are examples of that and how can those affect um, applications for visa. People usually call them prenuptial agreements, okay. but essentially it's a premarital agreement, but can also be a postmarital agreement. But uh, one of the, the trends that is definitely happening in America right now is that people are tending to marry later and later in life. As a result of getting married later in life, they tend to already have their separate properties already developed uh, by the time they come into a marriage, as opposed to getting married at the age of 22 or 23. If you get married at 29 or 31, as more and more couples are beginning to do now, they already have receivables, they have an expectation or a business that they may have already set up in advance. So in that case, it definitely behooves one to think about if in the event of a divorce, you might want to try to pre-handle or already set up a set of rules outside of the California guidelines that are basically dictate who's going to get which assets and debts. And how does it affect immigration, Allison? And I think, you know, with regards to immigration, especially when you have a lot of couples who are meeting online, mm -hmm. they may not have necessarily had um, as long of a relationship like we had perhaps um, <laughs> getting married. Uh, it's not that you don't trust your partner, but there you know, people need to realize and remember that when you're entering into a marriage, it is a legal contract. Mm -hmm. And when you're going into visa petitions, again, there are legal implications when you're getting married. And with regards to the visas, a lot of people don't quite understand the um, uh, factors that go into entering into a contract, how they may affect visa petitions, and immigration may or may not consider premarital agreements. Yeah, and let us also talk about, let's say for example, and, and I hear this a lot too, if you if you get your, because sometimes you get the F1, oh no, H1, H2, or something like that, if you're dependent on the visa of your spouse, and then you guys get divorced, what happens? Do you lose your visa right there, or what happens? Uh, well, with, with regards to visas, if you terminate a marriage and your visa is based on being married, you lose your visa once you get once wow. you get divorced. Wow. And so, the, again, you know, those are situations that people may want to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, uh, not necessarily even before they get married. You know, obviously, many people are already married when they're going into visa petitions, but. Post-nuptial, uh, post-marital agreements, uh, that might be a factor that they may want to consider. Um, and there really are, and, and that's the main, main focus, you know, with us, we have both sets of legal skills, both knowledge and both family and, and Right, counseling on fiancé, and I know we've talked about this before, fiancé versus marriage petitions. Which one's faster, which one's easier? 
Well, as far as fiancé and, and uh, marriage-based petitions, the fiancé petitions are certainly faster. Mm -hmm. But again, if you're looking at the family law implications, there may be advantages to getting married in the United States mm -hmm. versus perhaps getting married in the Philippines. There are, you know, if you get married overseas, then there would be Philippine laws that may factor in as far as, you know, marital issues are concerned. What about pre-marriage and marriage-type cases, um, Jesus, pre-marital agreements? Like you mentioned earlier, potential immigration issue, family law issues. What about LGBT issues? What are those? Well, it's definitely a much more common uh, event that's happening. As, as you've seen, California hasn't quite yet uh, lawfully allowed gay and lesbian couples to go ahead and marry. But I think most people realize that we're probably on the cusp of that possibly turning. And it's definitely the trend in other countries worldwide and definitely the trend on the East Coast moving out westward. But in this event already, it's better for you to have a, an agreement in place. Even though California won't right now legitimize and recognize your marriage, it's better to have a set of documents in place that one can prove up to the other side if necessary to prove up to a court that these are my expectations when I entered into this relationship and this is something that I should come away with it as, as well. Would the immigration courts um, um they would consider, factor that in. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you know, like Hasis just pointed out, there is no legal marriage right now for gay and lesbian couples. But, and as well in the immigration laws, unfortunately, a gay couple cannot just petition their spouse for a visa. Mm -hmm. um, however, immigration is recognizing the trend of recognizing same sex couples and providing benefits. So, although legally you cannot um, per se petition a partner for a visa, mm -hmm. Immigration does take into consideration whether you've been in a long-term re relationship. Right, okay. You know, they can consider that in determining prosecutorial discretion, whether to give you a break, whether to terminate your removal case in order to perhaps see if the courts are going to go ahead and allow gay marriages to, to be legally recognized. Wow, I'm learning a lot today. I didn't, I didn't know. I thought it was just about fiancé and marriage petitions, but now there's so much more. And we've just talked about coming together, being married. What about the, dis the dissolution of marriage? Earlier we talked about that the visa, if it's dependent on um, on the marriage, then you lose that. What about you know custody, visitation, timing concerns, and all that, and how family laws uh, affect immigration and visa decisions? We're going to be talking more when we return on the show. Don't go away.